Hello, and welcome back to our Dementia Prevention Webinar Series. And today we're going to talk about what we can do to boost the brain's memory and cognitive reserve. And this will be presented by Dr. Antoine Hakim. And if you haven't yet had a chance to hear our introductory webinar, please go back and hear episode one about the basics of fundamentals on dementia and dementia prevention. But at this point, I'm delighted to turn the session over to Dr. Antoine Hakim, who will tell us what we can do to build our cognitive reserve. Thank you for joining us. To tell you about how you can protect your brain from dementia. And there are going to be many factors that you need to become familiar with uh, in order to achieve that very important goal. The first um, message that I'd like to give you is that your brain, think of it like any other part of your body. If you don't use it, uh, it's going to deteriorate. And so what we have learned is that it is possible to increase the brain's capacity to remember. And if we push it to remember, push it to learn, then it actually grows. It physically grows, and it is, it's therefore able to serve you better. So how do we accomplish that? Well, first of all, what is the proof? Let's, let's look at that. Use it or lose it applies to your brain, and you can build something called cognitive reserve, which is your ability to function and have memory and remember things, despite the fact that the brain is beginning to weaken in other ways. So, and this cognitive reserve that you can build will only come when you offer the brain, number one, variety of activities, and secondly, you keep at it you're persistent but it's not by doing one thing again and again this picture shows a person doing crossword puzzles there is nothing wrong with crossword puzzles there is nothing wrong with sudoku but if that's all you did your brain is gonna get bored and you're not activating many parts of your brain you're activating just one spot maybe called Sudoku or crossword puzzles. So the brain wants variety and wants persistence. And so, for instance, we have learned that the longer you stay at work and the longer you force your brain to, stim to get stimulated at work by not retiring early, the more you protect your brain function. And you have to stimulate your brain's memory functions by writing, reading, memorizing, calculating, planning, mapping, joining a choir. Just, just think of how complicated it is to be in a choir. Now, first of all, you are looking at music uh, that's in front of you on a sheet, and you're going to try to produce the sound that matches those notes, musical notes. The brain is already working hard. And then you, the brain is also has to listen to the people to your right and to your left and coordinate your voice, your tone, your speed with them. That's hard work for the brain. And you know what? It is very grateful to you. The brain is happy to be working for you. Playing a musical instrument, learning a new language, there is clear evidence that each additional language you learn delays the onset of dementia by some period of time. The, the major proof for this came from something called the nun study. These nuns had allowed themselves to be examined for their mental activities while they were alive and allowed themselves to, be, to have their brains examined once they had passed on. 61 
brains were available to the people who studied these nuns' brains. And then one day, and 61 of these brains, um, so the total number of brains available were 102. And 61 of those brains showed the plaques and tangles that I talked about in the last webinar that said, oh, these nuns must have suffered from Alzheimer's disease when they were alive. But when they went back and looked at how they had done at all the different exams that they were given, only 35 of them had actually been showing some dementia, which says that your brain can function despite the fact that these plaques and tangles are accumulated. And so do we have any other uh, evidence for the fact that we can protect our brain from dementia. In these nuns, look at number four on the slide. If you had both these plaques and tangles and small strokes, then it was almost certain that you will have shown dementia while you were alive. Blood vessel disease in the brain is a sure uh, pathway to developing dementia. And that is a very important lesson. On the other hand, you can delay the onset of dementia by making demands on your brain, putting demands on your brain. We, we learned that taxi drivers in London, England, have to learn every street and every alleyway and take repeated exams for a period of four years and pass the exam and only then be given a license to drive a taxi in London, England. And so somebody said, wait a minute, so not everybody passes. And so what they did is they did CT scans on the brains of all these people, some of whom had succeeded after four years of studying and others had failed because they didn't study as hard. And to their amazing surprise, those who had passed had built up a bigger hippocampus in the brain, uh, and which is the part of the brain that has a lot to do with memory function. So what does that say? That says, if you push your brain to learn, if you push your brain to develop activities that require memory, your brain actually expands to accommodate these new demands that you are putting on it. So this is very important lesson, is keep that brain of yours getting pushed like you will develop a bigger biceps or a bigger muscle if you activate it and move it, your brain will actually expand and develop less atrophy if you push it to remember things. And so look at the complex activities and memory functions that these taxi drivers in London have to learn. It By pushing their brain, they, um, specific enduring structural brain changes in your brain can be accomplished by imposing on your brain relevant activity and cognitive functions. And so this is, these are my words. I've, I've, you know, we talked about how your brain requires all of this blood supply and because it is working all the time. And so my take home messages are that think of your brain as this organ that is working all the time. It doesn't matter whether you are walking or reading or eating or sleeping or dreaming, your brain is working. This is like a motor that is revving up all the time. And so it needs ample blood supply to sustain all this activity. 
if it doesn't get enough blood supply, it's going to look for things it needs to stop doing for you because they require energy. And one of these will be memory. And so it turns out that those nasty proteins that Dr. Alzheimer's saw in the brain of patients who had died with memory difficulty, and we call them plaques and tangles, are like the dirty oil that accumulates in the engine that is revved up all the time. The blood flowing through the brain cleans them up, and so they disappear. And so increasingly, we recognize that these proteins that accumulate in the brain, that until recently we thought were the problem, are in fact not the problem. They are a consequence of the main problem, which is the blood supply to the brain is going down. And so these nasty proteins are not getting cleaned out, are not getting washed out. And so the blood supply that is going down is both bringing you less energy than before, and so the brain can function very well, and doesn't wash away the nasty proteins, and so they accumulate. So unfortunately, Dr. Alzheimer's was fooled into thinking that that was the problem. But my colleagues in Montreal are saying there is a problem ahead of that, and that is the blood supply to the brain is going down. And so in the next webinars, we're going to talk about how to protect that blood supply. That's the next, sem the next webinar that is coming along. We're going to start by talking about how to avoid strokes and how to treat them when they happen. And then we're going to go on into other conditions that you need to pay attention to. Thank you very much. If you'd like to learn more about resources available to you, please visit our partners at the Dementia Society of Ottawa in Renfrew County. So I'd like to thank Dr. Hakeem for a very interesting and informative webinar, and I hope everyone really enjoyed it. And at this point, I would like to thank our supporters and also acknowledge our partners. So the University of Ottawa Brain and Mind Research Institute is affiliated with and supported by the University of Ottawa and the associated faculties. We also have over 250 researchers, many of whom come from our partner institutions, including CHEO, the Briere Hospital, the Montfort Hospital, the Ottawa Hospital, and the Royal Institute of Mental Health Research. Finally, I would like to thank the Brain and Mind admin team for all the work and all their production efforts, including Natasha Hollywood, Victoria Rache, Candice Fortier, and Sarah Schock. So thank you so much. And finally, if you have questions for us, or if you have comments, or you'd like to follow us, please go to our website at uottawa.ca slash brain or follow us on Facebook or on Twitter. And many of you are with us today because you have lived experience with dementia. Like many of us, you have family members, friends or relatives that are living with the devastating effects of dementia. And presently, there is no cure. So if you would like to make a difference and make a direct impact on the innovative research that we're doing at the University of Ottawa Brain and Mind Research Institute, please support our memory and cognition research today by going to the link alumni.uottawa.ca slash brain health. So thank you for being with us and we hope you join us again soon for upcoming webinars.